So my father told me, if I was a scientist or an engineer, I would always have a job. So I decided to do pre-med because my dad was a doctor, but I soon found I liked chemistry better than biology. And I think the reason for that was within my small liberal arts college chemistry department, I found a supportive community. As chemistry majors, we worked in teams, in experiments in the lab, and we struggled together late into the night on organic chemistry problem sets. My mentor said to me, Emily, you're good at this. Why don't you think about doing graduate school in chemistry? And so I went and spent a summer at Argonne National Laboratory to see if I even liked research. There, I was part of a community of 100 undergraduates coming in from all over the nation and staying in a dormitory together for the summer. We did science by day, but we certainly played by night. So I decided to go to graduate school in physical chemistry, figuring I would find a community there as well. And for the first two years, it was great. We took classes together, and we did quantum mechanics problem sets together late into the night. But then, I went into the lab by myself and didn't come out for three whole years. You see, to earn a PhD, you need to prove that you can develop your own scientific research question and answer that question. I was on my own in the lab, day in, day out, year in, year out, which I found exhausting. But once a year or so, we'd get to go to a scientific research conference. That's my community, right? Thousands would fly into Las Vegas, and we'd talk science and share ideas for four whole days, and then we'd all fly back home and go back into the lab. There's got to be a better way. After graduation, I was eager to leave the lonely world of academics. I went into industry because I wanted to learn about the business side of things, although I really had no idea what that meant. But it sounded like there would be people there. There might even be a community. So I went into industry, but soon found problems stemming from the fact that those same individual contributors who had done so well on their own in the lab were now being asked to manage teams of scientists and engineers with predictable results. Their direct reports didn't understand the bigger picture. They weren't motivated to work in teams or to work across disciplines. And this is what's really needed in order to solve the really big problems. As a result, morale suffered. And I thought to myself, someday, I'd like to create a place where scientists and engineers really want to work. But in the meantime, I was climbing the corporate ladder, getting promotions, managing bigger and bigger teams, and, and taking on more and more responsibility because I could get people to work together on time and on budget. But I started to think after a few years, I've spent 21 years of my life in school for this. I'm helping one company make an incremental additional profit. But it was about this time that I discovered clean technology, which to me translated to using my scientific training and my business background to solve the world's biggest energy and environmental challenges. I even joined a new company with this as a mission. And finally, I could get up in the morning and feel like I was making an impact. But soon, I ran into the same structural constraints and resulting morale problems as at the previous company. There must be a better way. 
I decided the better way was to run my own company. And after 11 years in the workforce, I went back for my 22nd year of education, this time to business school at MIT. Ah, community. I thought if there was anywhere where I'm going to learn to build an organization in which scientists and engineers feel like they're part of something and are inspired and motivated to solve the really big challenges, it would be here. And while I earned my MBA, I looked around for a clean tech company in which I could create a community. And I heard about a bunch of clean tech startups squatting in a basement in South Boston, something called Green Town Labs. Well, I went to check out this Green Town Labs and I immediately fell in love. Not with the building. These scientists and engineers were squatting in a basement of the turn of the last century factory building. The place was crammed full of prototypes and equipment. There was no air conditioning, really no ventilation, except when the loading dock door was open. And every rule I had ever learned in corporate lab safety was being cheerfully broken. <laughs> no, I fell in love with the buzz created by the passion of these entrepreneurs about their work. Founded by just four startups who were looking for inexpensive space to build prototypes, Greentown Labs was now 15 companies sharing space in this grungy basement. This was a group of scientists and engineers who are tackling the world's biggest energy and environmental challenges, and they were doing it within a community. The original four founders were still running the place while they were trying to run their own businesses. They needed help. And they told me they might need an executive director sometime soon. And I thought to myself, could this be the community that I had dreamed of creating? Could this be the community that I had thought about from the very beginning? Community, impact, in need of a leader. What could go wrong in Greentown Labs? Could this be the better way? Well, there was no money, and there were six months left on a lease in the hottest real estate market in South Boston, where prices had gone from $8 a square foot to $54 a square foot in just a year and a half. There was no way that that rent could be passed on to entrepreneurs. But this was a community already having an impact. And with some hesitation, about not being paid anything to take the job, I signed on as Greentown Labs' first executive director in February of 2013. There was a lot to do. A community to maintain and to grow, a home to find, money to be raised. But even I underestimated the power of a community on a mission. Though we thought we'd stay in South Boston, we were soon introduced to the mayor of Somerville, and he came and toured and met with our entrepreneurs. Many of them already lived in Somerville, and so by community vote, we decided to move our operations there. The city found us a building, helped us raise financing, 1.2 million in all. We signed a lease, and we announced our move to the city of Somerville with the Governor Deval Patrick, the mayor, and our community in attendance. We started and finished a construction project in just seven weeks. And our community came together to help us move 25 startups from South Boston into Somerville in just one week with the last prototype coming through the door at 9 p.m. on September 20th. And we opened for business 
on September 23rd, 2013. And the community has grown from there. Today, we are more than 40 startups and the largest clean technology incubator in the country. We support entrepreneurs who share a common space as well as a common need to have a bigger impact. And we've created a place where scientists and engineers really want to work, where I want to work. But I'm often asked, how do we know that this community approach is successful? Well, our startups have raised more than $100 million in just four years. And we've got companies coming to us from across the country and around the world to be part of this community. And all that in a time when the media has declared that clean tech is dead. I can tell you it is not dead, and it is right here in Somerville, Massachusetts. And we've seen this in the many successes of Greentown Lab startups solving major global problems. For example, the first village level refrigeration system that allows rural dairy farmers in India to keep their milk cold, fighting bacterial contamination and spoilage. The first fully functional airborne wind turbine to produce electricity for remote island nations who are currently dependent on expensive and dirty diesel fuel. The first beverage dispensing system that eliminates the need for plastic water bottles so that we can reduce the size of that giant plastic island now floating in the Pacific. Entrepreneurs like these don't have to be alone working in their basement or their apartment. At Greentown Labs, I see them working together, sharing more than just tools and equipment. They share knowledge, know-how, experience, and they are motivated by being part of something bigger than themselves. There is a better way. And today, I do get paid. So remember, my dad said, if I was a scientist or engineer, I would always have a job. But I needed more than a job. I needed a community. And so my message to you today is, if you're someone who's always looking for a better way, there's a community out there for you too. Maybe it already exists, but maybe, just maybe, it's waiting for you to create it. Thank you.